The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, Boris Optics, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Ammunition, Browning Firearms, Suffix Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Yukon Gear, Killer Instinct Crossbows, and Outfitter Financial. You see this here? Here's a swamp. If you hit it on the right day, the frog bite can be good in the fall. I don't know whether to throw the jig or the frog in here though. Hmm. Maybe I will throw the frog. Get ready. Oh, got one behind me. Oh, he took it under without even splashing. That's a first for me. Catching big bass seems like an easy thing to do. Missed it. Especially when you see it done on TV. Oh, shot it in the air. The truth is that every one of us has probably been skunked. No one likes to get skunked. And driven home scratching our heads after a bad day fishing. Sometimes it's the wrong lure, or maybe bad timing. Oh, no, I pulled it away from him. Oh. Or even the weather wasn't right. Yeah, there's a magic uh, couple of days between summer and fall. It's not a turnover, I mean, the lake still 66, 67 degrees. Two days ago it was 73 to 75, and it was hot. But uh, a storm, some cold weather, a couple of cold nights, changes everything. North wind. The excuses are endless, but today I'm gonna share my strategy for finding bass fast and making the most mm. of a day on the water. Mm. Mm, my God, you wanna know why I use a long rod? 60 pound line, <laughs> this is why. Oh, that thing was way out there. Oh. My approach to finding active bass on a new lake is pretty simple. It may take all day to find where they are. Blah. But rest assured, more often than not, this strategy will put fish in the boat. It feels like an eight pounder every time you get one. <laughs> They're in there eating them froggies. Ah, okay. That was like war. I'm all wet and exhausted. What does the OFAH do? Since 1928, the OFAH has been the voice of anglers and hunters in Ontario. Its members raise funds and work in communities to support the traditions of fishing, hunting, and trapping. Let's take a look at how the OFAH is making a difference. Hi, I'm August Miller. I'm here with Matt Burley. He's the Community Hatchery Programs Coordinator from the OFAH. So what is a community hatchery? A uh, community hatchery is a group of volunteers that raise fish in um, a facility uh, and they put them into local lakes and rivers and stock them for you and I to catch. So what kind of fish are in the hatcheries? So we have a number of different hatcheries or facilities. Um, we do have hatcheries that have walleye, uh, salmon and trout species, a number of different ones. And it uh, just depends on where you are in Ontario and uh, what are locally found within the lakes and rivers. So how long do the fish live after they're released? So depending on the species, if we use say salmon or trout as an example, uh, on average, once they're stocked into lakes and rivers, they can live to anywhere from about two to say seven years, typically for a salmon or trout. Um, but in some cases, uh, lake trout, which are a longer living species and with their, where, they're, where they're living in much colder habitats, they can actually live up to even 50 years old. So can you eat the fish that are released from the hatchery? Yeah, for sure. Um, every summer, even sometime in the winter, I'll catch uh, fish often from uh, lakes around local uh, community hatcheries and uh, definitely they're very good to consume. It's never been more important for youth to get involved and support Ontario's fish and wildlife. Carrying on the tradition of fishing, hunting and trapping through conservation. 
This portion of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. Whew. What a day to go fishing. We're gonna go for it. I'm just gonna go fishing today. I've got a few of my favorite setups with me. Uh, I've got muskie and bass, and there's walleye in here, but I'm really not gonna to focus too much on walleye. I'm gonna be structure fishing. Uh, cabbage beds, rock, islands, points, um, docks, and lily pads. And whatever else I see. So I've got a, a spinner bait. I'm going to search out some fish. I've got a frog in case I get some heavy stuff. Uh, flipping jig, which is my favorite way to fish for bass. I think spinners are probably going to be the way to go today. And uh, let's find out. Susan hit the water. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Rocky shorelines and points are good starting places and they can be easily covered with a spinnerbait. Literally, just hit the water. And although you can catch big fish on a blade, I tend to find I mostly eliminate unproductive water using one. Skinny. Ooh. Aha! That's a little bit better. You know, like I said, throwing a spinnerbait or an, you know, a fast moving bait up a shallow, smallmouth sometimes just go nuts. Smallmouth, another little one. Get yourself a little bit of some of these spinner baits, I'm telling you. I mean, they're not the biggest fish, but they're the bikeness fish. Is that a word, bikeness? <laughs> My Minn Kota and Humminbirds are the most important tools for me when I'm trying to find fish. Looking for depth, transitions, and of course, structure are keys but so is being able to efficiently position the boat so I can make accurate casts and cover water until I connect. Oh, I caught one. <laughs> I caught one. That's another one of those little boppers. Hmm. Maybe if I go back further, they'll get bigger. Is that an idea? I think so. Because a frog, if they miss it, you can leave it there. You know they're there because they splash. And you'd know it's the main part of their diet. So going into the fall. Casting a weedless frog over pads and around heavy cover is a must. Oh, he's under it. Did you see that? Even if the fish don't blow up on the frog, You'll often see fish move or even get spooked when you're working in the shallows. I missed it again. <laughs> now everybody's watching me fish in this slough. I could get out here and walk. There's a bass. And they're going to say, those are all just babies. It's too shallow for big ones. I'm not exaggerating. Giant bass live in skinny water. Hopefully I can prove that to you. Got one on the frog right there. Yeah, it feels pretty good. Yep. Come on, you're in that thick stuff. I'm not going to net him. I'm just going to crane him. Oh, that's a fat little fish. That's getting hit. It's getting better. Oop, frog just shot out. Goop at me. Holy. There you go. That's three blow-ups in one bay. I'm not joking about the, the frog thing. That's a good looking one. It's a good looking bass. You can catch some, some pretty big fish in the end of summer on a frog. Even into the fall, that first, first bit of the fall. Whew! You get out of bed on a day like this and you think it's not gonna be a good day of fishing with that cold north wind, but they could be the best days. And you can never fish too shallow. <laughs> a lot of guys think, you know, fishermen will tell you, it's too cold, it's too shallow. No way, man. When the frog bites on, you throw that thing right on the bank. Frog got me a good one. Hey, the sun's out, it's warming up a bit. The fish are starting to bite. That's a decent bass right there. 
That's a decent bass any day of the week. Man. Is there any great big ones? That's what we're about to find out here. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Docks are often the ultimate place for big bass to hang out. The problem is, most lakes have hundreds and even thousands of docks. So where do I start? Deep breaks close to spawning areas and of course, docks that are in shallow back bays or that have a creek nearby. So, I mean, uh, flipping jig is one of my favorite big fish baits. Uh, really comes into its own late in the season. And I mean, you know, half three eighths, there's micro jigs. This is just a little micro tungsten jig, but it's all about the trailers. I put, uh, oh, that looks good. These smell good. It's the donkey sauce. So that right there, if I put that on, it's gonna to be too long and I'll probably get short strikes. I mean, even my spinner bait was getting short strikes. So I'll bite, I don't know, half an inch off of it, shorten it up. And then just feed it on. Just feed it through there till it comes through halfway through the body of the craw. Like that. Slide it up onto that little keeper. And there's uh, a great little bass weapon right there. Maybe I'll get a big one today. A few hours of scouring a lake and mixing up your presentation often seems like work and can be discouraging if the bites aren't there. But through the process of elimination, I eventually find what I'm looking for. It's huge. It's a huge one. I'm going to put the talons down. It's a huge one. Oh, come on. Don't you jump. You jump right in that lucky strike. There it is. That's why you do it all day long. That's why you do it all day long. I said... I said the uh, the jig on the docks was going to be the way to go. Man, what a beast. <laughs> that is a fatty. What a good looking bass. And that's what it's all about. I mean, you know, I got lots of fish today, had some fun. But if that's all I catch and that's the end of my day, I'm going to be pretty happy with that. What a bruiser. Shallow back bays, swamps, and creek mouths are also go-to spots. And often will be one of the places you get most of the action. There's another big one. Oof. Man. Just barely hooked him. <laughs> That's a beauty. It's got some big ones in it. Oh, that's another hog. Oh, this is a real good one. Man, the old flipping jig's working now. That's a bruiser. Look at that. I'm not going to complain about that ever. Whew. That is a big one. Oh, he's 
that, hijo. We lay him over that. <laughs> Fatties. That's a big one. Things are starting to happen now. Focus on that jig and uh, I'm telling you, work at things enough and you'll you'll catch the big fish. You know, I was catching lots of little ones, getting kind of discouraged, happy with the numbers. Hog, that's a hog. Any day of the week, any lake. Man, beautiful. Go get bigger. The Fishing Edge is brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. To get the edge over the bass, I used my Lunt 1875 Pro V Bass and Mercury 200 Pro XS to get around the lake. My Humminbird Helix and Minn Kota Ultrex were instrumental in getting me in close and working the spots. The bass were crushing a 3 8 ounce perfect jig and a 13 fishing Ninja Craw trailer tied to 50 pound suffix braid and cast with a seven and a half foot 13 fishing fate heavy action flipping stick and origin bait cast reel. A lucky strike net and CUDA tools made sure all the fish were handled with care and released back in the lake. Okay, so I mean basically what, well, you know, what happened today was I went looking for fish um, and I, I covered the lake fish some rock points, fish some shallow, fish some, some wood and, and weeds and stuff with a spinnerbait. Um, half ounce spinnerbait, tandem willow is sort of my go-to. I tied to direct braid just because there's muskies in the lake and um, if I did happen to get a muskie, there's a chance it wouldn't bite me off with that braid. And I'm uh, seven foot two, uh, medium heavy rod and you know, just any bait caster. I like to use a bait caster with a bit of a faster retrieve, seven or eight to one. That way you're not really burning it. You can slow it down, change your speeds. Caught a lot of fish on a spinner bait today. And then um, found lots of fish shallow in the pads and on the bank with the frog. That's just a terminator. It's a walking frog. You can walk it side to side, but I found today that the slower I fished it, the more fish came and got it and grabbed it. Um, 65 pound braid and again this is 7 foot 11 heavy action rod it's a nice frog rod you want a real long rods make long casts and get hook sets on those fish when they're way back there um, and that's just an origin reel lock the drag down and reel them in and then um, the, my fate flipping stick this has been my go-to this year it's a seven and a half foot um, heavy action Flipping stick, 50 pound braid. I don't go 65 on it because uh, 65 you might just bust your rod if you set into a rock or something. So 50 pound braid, a little bit more forgiving. And then uh, just a, you know, a flipping jig with a Ninja Craw. Ninja Craw is my go-to thing for throwing on the back of a jig. Um, I trim them off and bite them down like I talked about, but uh, it's a nice meaty little bait with some claws on it. Fills up your jig nice. And there you go, I mean, fall fishing. End of summer when the fish go shallow and strap on the feed bag. Um, stay close to shore, burn blades, throw frogs, and flip a jig at everything you see and you'll catch some big bass, obviously. There's a big one. <laughs> oh, it's big, I need the net. Come on, come on, come on, get in there. Yes, sir. Oh, there's another one just as big in there. This is a tank. That's what I'm talking about. Throw it up on shore, smash those things. <laughs> what a bruiser. Short, heavy tank. That's why you call them tanks. Big head, monster bass, holy. You got a rock, some lily pads, and some arrowheads. There's nothing in there that really would hold a fish, but they're up there eating frogs and chowing down. Woo! Awesome. Just awesome. You're free. <sighs> oh. If I ever get sick of catching big bass like that, me in a retirement home. Woo! <laughs> Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television 
is brought to you in part by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine, and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Firearms and Ammunition, Suffix Fishing Line, Rapala, Camillus Knives and Cuda Tools, Yukon Gear, Killer Instinct Crossbows, and Outfitter Financial. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.